So I'm very uh, excited tonight to talk to you um, about uh, the Memorial Tattoos project um, that uh, I'm presenting uh, alone, but I certainly didn't do alone. So um, it's just, uh, we're gonna do, I'm going to do a bit of a grief overview because I never miss a chance to talk about grief when I can, and a little bit of uh, background and the research procedures talk about the who, what, where, and why of the tattoos, um, as well as what we're doing next, and then take your questions. Uh, so, grief. Um, almost everyone has heard of the five stages of grief, and um, I am not a fan of the five stages of grief. There is uh, there's, uh, there's nothing linear, there's nothing, there's a lot of research that says that. Um, the five stages, um, while they might be helpful for people who are grieving as signposts, um, they uh, they are not. They are they were developed for um, people who are dying, not people who are grieving, and um, they've taken on a life of their own and gone beyond what they were ever ever intended to do. Um, so, um, I uh, one of my lifelong uh, goals is to. Um, get the uh, lo the longest hashtag ever going, which is no more five stages of grief, but uh, it's very long and it's uh, it doesn't, it's not, probably not going to take off. Um, so just as an example, um, at ways of understanding grief, just to, to the, this is um, uh, what's called the two-track model. And um, what I particularly like about this model is the, um, the time, days, weeks, months, years, because grief lasts, grief does not end, grief changes, um, but we live with grief um, for a very long time and for some of us forever. Um, and so, um, you know, and, and this model says that it affects us both, you know, physically as well as relationally. Um, and another uh, model, this one is, I refer to this as the oscillation model. Um, so basically, it's about how we uh, we turn towards life, we turn towards grief, and we go back and forth, and we oscillate between those uh, between those sort of orientations. Um, and uh, I pr I really like this model because um, it's uh, it's not simple, it's not staged, um, it's very complex, and grief is complex. Grief is grief is. Um, is very complicated. It's it's uh, it's complicated for each one of us, though it is not necessarily complicated grief, which is a whole thing in and of itself. Um, so, uh, what I my favorite um, notion about grief is that um, we form new bonds with people. When someone dies, we don't end the relationship, we have, we have a new relationship, we form a new relationship with them. Um, and so this um, slide um, is saying, yes, this is normal. This is a person talking to a, a, a photograph or a, you know, a, a painting, a portrait um, of someone. And that's just one way of um, demonstrating that we have, uh, that we have, we have ongoing bonds with people. Uh, so I really like this. Grief is not a disorder, a disease, or a sign of weakness. It is an emotional, physical, and spiritual necessity, and it is the price you pay for love. And the only cure for grief is to grieve. Um, so in terms of memorial tattoos, um, in the project we defined a memorial tattoo as, as a tattoo that was uh, that someone got to honor someone who had died. And when we were doing the research, um, we, uh, we wanted to investigate the meaning um, by documenting um, the, um, the tattoos um, and uh, documenting the stories. Um, and we limited to, in this particular project, um, tattoos that memorialized people there are lots of people who have uh, tattoos for um, animals, pets, and um, and for lots of other reasons. Um, but in this particular project, we just limited to um, 
those tattoos that memorialized a person who had died. Um, so I said earlier, I didn't do this work alone. Um, I, I started it very early on uh, with Melissa Reed Lambert, um, who um, is a local uh, social worker um, and um, private practitioner um, here in Kitchener. Um, and Mary Ellen McDonald, um, De Deborah Davidson, Marcella Garman, and Mel Melanie Bajko. Um, so if you look at where they're from, they're from sociology and dentistry, although Mary Ellen is an anthropologist and the Department of English and the Department of um, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. So we have this really great um, interdisciplinary team uh, to think about this. So it was really, uh, it was really a, a team undertaking. Um, and just, I want to start um, by, we had uh, both internal funding from the University of Waterloo and from the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, but we particularly um, always want to thank our participants. Um, and I want to note here that all of the photos and any of the quotes that you're going to hear um, are used with permission. Everybody, um, everybody signed forms, everybody had choices about um, about being recorded, um, having audio recordings of their of their interviews, um, and about um, being photographed. And so everything that um, that uh, I'm sharing with you, we have we have permission to to share. Um, so we did a narrative inquiry. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. The research is. Uh, you know, the methods is not what you're here necessarily to hear about. Um, but, and we, we used, for, for example, that notion of continuing bonds. So those different, those, those ongoing relationships, that was part of the, um, uh, the one of the lenses that we used in, in interpretation. Uh, so, who, who gets uh, memorial tattoos? Um, I, um, I forgot to make my confession at the beginning. Um, I uh, I do not have any tattoos, and um, I have some uh, family members who um, have some very um, funny ideas. Some of them, some some of them rather negative about tattoos, and um, so uh, one of the questions that a family member put to me was. Um, well, you know, who is it that gets these tattoos? And they must all be young people. Um, and I thought, you know what? I don't think that's accurate. And I hadn't actually sort of um, sat back and, and uh, uh, looked at the uh, ages, but that, that question from that family member really caused me to do that. Um, and, and just, I always like to say that one of the, um, one of the team members um, who has lots of tattoos she always says, when I say I don't have any tattoos, she always adds, yet. So there's always the possibility. So even the, despite the, the, the negative um, the impressions in my family anyway. But um, so we, uh, we the, in terms of the who generally, uh, we interviewed uh, 42 people with tattoos. Um, and those 42 people were, uh, that was done in 39 interviews because we had three couples who were interviewed together, and we had one person who was interviewed twice because he got a second tattoo and he asked to come back and be interviewed again. Uh, we had uh, uh, nine men, 31 women, and two gender-free, gender-queer folk, um, and their relationships to the people who died were the gamut of human relationships. We had, uh, we had partners, we had parents of young children, older children, um, uh, stillborn babes. Um, we, had, um, uh, we had children and grandchildren of, of adults who had died. Um, we had siblings and we had friends. We had, um, we had like every human relationship that, that I can think of. Um, so in particular relation to uh, the ages of um, of the uh, people who participated. Um, they were not all young. Um, well, it depends on how you define young. 
Um, being in my 50s, I still think that's young, but <laughs> not many people do. Um, but there were equal numbers of folks in their 20s as folks in their 50s. And our, um, our oldest participants um, got his first tattoo when he was in his 70s, um, and he was in his 80s when we interviewed him. So, um, so they, were not just, uh, they were not just young people. Um, and um, certainly, um, you know, there's a nice uh, there's a nice distribution of um, uh, of the ages. Um, and I just I wanted to note as well um, that uh, many people had um, more than one tattoo, um, more than one memorial tattoo, um, and some had um, tattoos for for other reasons and some people only had one tattoo so we had you know we had a whole gamut of of um of that of that kind of aspect as well um so what what do they get what do they what do memorial tattoos uh look like so um i've organized them a little bit into some categories so the first category um, is uh, flowers and plants, um, and uh, this tattoo um, is um, obviously a rose. Um, it's a very vivid rose, um, and um, this uh, young woman got this uh, tattoo to honor her father uh, because he used to bring roses to her and her mother. Um, and um, so she, she felt that that was um, the, the uh, most appropriate way to honor him. Um, she, she remarked that him bringing roses was a really lovely gesture, so she thought it was appropriate to carry it with her a little bit, um, to, to paraphrase a quote from, from her interview. That, this this tattoo uh, is interesting as well because um, she sought out a very famous tattoo artist and you know made an appointment and uh, you know months if not years ahead and traveled a distance to the tattoo artist. Um, so uh, you know the uh, who does the tattoo is uh, a very important uh, and very important part of it. But to my knowledge, this is the only one with. Uh, a, a famous tattoo artist. Um, uh, but continuing with the flowers and plants, uh, this, um, this woman, uh, this is her first tattoo, uh, not her last. Um, and this one also honors her father. Um, and they used to uh, garden together. And um, so she thought that a tomato plant was a fitting um, way to honor her relationship with her father and her and, and their gardening together. Um, and uh, so the um, I think I was a member of her family that designed the tomato plants, um, and then the tattoo artist put the sort of diamonds behind it to make it to make it stand out. Um, and um, one of the things that I found really striking throughout this research is um, the, how, the role that tattoo artists have in, um, in making the tattoos uh, successful, I guess, but like to, in the sense that they are, that they're beautiful and they, they really, um, they, they stand out even, um, you know, something that's black and white and, and isn't, uh, you know, isn't necessarily uh, colorful. Uh, it just, it makes it, uh, it makes it stand out in a, in a striking way. Um, this tattoo um, is on the back of her calf, um, and it's an oak leaf, um, and um, contains the word for strength in Dutch, which this family um, uh, often said to one another. And um, so this uh, person's uh, brother had died, so the Oak leaf honors her brother, but also the the family and then the family tradition of of saying this uh, this word um, to one another. So uh, memorial tattoos often, um, uh, you know, are on, they honor someone who died, but they also often honor um, 
um, others and, you know, and, and have connections to others. And, um, uh, and in this one, in this case, it's, it's honoring this family tradition of, of using this word. Um, so another category is uh, creatures. Um, this uh, is um, a dragonfly, and um, this is the this person's uh, second memorial tattoo. Um, and um, the dragonfly for him um, symbolized transformation and grief, um, as he had understood that um, dragonflies bring angels on their wings. And so the dragonfly is holding a halo, and the date that is underneath uh, the dragonfly's wings is the date of his wife's death. Um, and her initials are in the wings of the, uh, of the dragonfly. Um, and uh, further in creatures, um, the, this um, young woman uh, had always wanted a tattoo um, and a, um, her, one of her friends died, and um, as she, um, as her friend was dying, she knew that she was going to um, get a purple frog because her friend loved frogs. Um, and uh, and it's interesting to have the 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 frog have wings. Um, there, there's often um, there's there are so the, they're creatures because they're. Um, they're not always perfectly accurate creatures. Um, I'm not aware of a lot of frogs with wings, though they might exist because nature is wonderful. Um, this is another tattoo. This is a peony, um, and this peony honors this woman's uh, grandparents, um, but it also connects um, both the um, the living and those who have died. So the butterfly with uh, Angelina underneath uh, is for her daughter, who is uh, uh, um, who is alive and well, and and, and is connected to uh, Angelina's great grandparents in this tattoo, because um, this is the um, the mother's the mother's grandparents, um, and Angelina had never met her great grandfather. Um, so it, it, uh, this connects, um, this honors both someone who has died and um, connects um, the, uh, the living as well. Um, tattoos also often involve hearts. Uh, this heart is also a fingerprint. Um, this, uh, young woman's husband died um, and um, he died suddenly of an overdose. Uh, one of her children were very young um, and she told the story of um, her youngest um, touching the tattoo, tapping it and saying, you have daddy's heart. So it, the tattoo in that sense also uh, connects uh, it connects the living and, and the dead. And she, uh, she talked about, uh, you know, um, wearing it proudly um, and really um, honoring, uh, you know, that connection with her children um, in that manner. Um, this heart um, is a participant um, who had experienced um, two deaths uh, an, an ex-spouse as well as a best friend, both of whom had died by suicide years apart. Um, and this person felt that her grief was dismissed by others and that her losses were disenfranchised. Um, and so this is a heart with wings and it's uh, broken, but, and there's a band-aid and there's the word joy. There's a lot. There's a lot in this um, in this small, relatively small tattoo, um, but um, you know, there's a there's a lot of um, seemingly contradictory um, um, emotions, um, but um, that are all part of um, this this woman's story. Um, this heart uh, is. Um, for uh, a sister 
um, and the sister named Holly Jean who died. Um, and this woman um, remarked um, that with this tattoo, um, she felt like her sister was closer to her and that she would never lose her because of having the tattoo. She said that her sister would not fade away because she's still there with this tattoo. And this tattoo, it, this tattoo is probably the one, um, you know, when we first started talking about doing this project, um, I expected more, um, more kind of um, symbolism of death, um, like like crosses or um, or or tombs or or, or skulls or, and things like that, and um, and there are very few. Um, and um, what's remarkable is um, the uh, the stories that go along with the tattoos. A lot of these tattoos you would not know that the memorial tattoos unless unless you ask the question but this is probably the one that sort of that's it looks the most like a memorial tattoo um there's also a category of tattoos that are words um and so this one is a quote um a taylor swift quote um, when i'm teaching i i like to ask um, and I'm in the classroom or in a room with people, I like to ask if anybody um, recognizes the quote. Um, lots of young people don't like to admit um, that, that they are familiar with Taylor Swift. This is a Taylor Swift um, quote. And, um, and you know, it's, uh, it's not cool anymore to be, to, be, uh, to be a fan of Taylor Swift, I guess. I don't know. Um, but, um, yeah, you are the best thing that's ever been mine. Um, the uh, this young woman used to say that to her to her friend, um, and so uh, she decided to get that as a tattoo um, because it also summed up their relationship. Um, so she's got that on the back of her shoulder along with her friend's name and 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 dates. Uh, this uh, tattoo um, is part of the semicolon project. Um, and uh, the, um, the semicolon project uh, is um, an, an attempt to fight st uh, stigma um, around mental health. Um, and um, this young woman's uh, sister uh, died by suicide. And so this uh, tattoo both um, uh, symbolizes her sister uh, but also reminds her uh, to choose to keep going, to keep um, it, it, um, it's, it's, um, it's an effort for her to remind herself um, that she needs to keep going when, when she is struggling herself. Um, and she remarked that she had always wanted to be involved in trying to lessen the stigma against suicide because it's a scary topic. And that's one of the really extraordinary things that we really enjoyed in this um, research as well is the ways that people use their tattoos um, to engage um, and talk to others and to fight stigma, to fight the, to challenge the stigma of, of, well, of having a tattoo, to challenge the stigma of grief because grief is stigmatized, um, but um, also to challenge um, stigma around certain kinds of deaths like suicide and overdose. Um, and so there are a lot of people who um, uh, were, you know, talked about their tattoos in a way of, of advocating and, and lessening stigma. Uh, this tattoo, I think, is probably the only tattoo that was um, on the front of someone's shins, um, it's, uh, um, you know, one side says all saints have a past and the other side says all sinners have a future. Um, and uh, this tattoo um, memorializes um, a friend who had died by suicide um, and is placed on the front of his legs, uh, their legs, so that um, that it's it's a relatively public area and um, people see it and um, um, 
you know, people ask questions. And so it's to engage in, um, and to engage in dialogue about tattoos, about stigma, about uh, mental health, about suicide, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, another one, um, nevertheless, she persisted is a quote that um, got um, very um, used in the in the me Too, in the me too movement um, but um, this woman um, saw it as part of her grief um, journey and so um, she had that as um, as a memorial tattoo to her husband this is actually the same woman as the um, earlier uh, fingerprint heart um, so this was her her other memorial tattoo um, these words are, this is, so this is two arms, um, um, a husband and wife, um, whose adult son died, um, <laughs> and, and they, um, and their son had written, uh, focus, love, appreciate, um, and so you can see that they both have focus, love, appreciate, um, in his handwriting, um, uh, on their arms, and um, they uh, they had many memorial tattoos, um, but um, they were for um, the son and um, and a grandson who had died, um, and they too um, engaged in um, talking to others about suicide prevention and used their tattoos to engage in in conversations and um, to challenge stigma. So there's also tattoos that, um, they're all personal, but there's tattoos that are very personalized. Uh, this mother's daughter uh, died of cancer before the age of three. And um, she, uh, in having cancer treatments, would be given bravery beads at Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. Um, and um, so the mother took the bravery beads to the tattoo artist um, who designed this incredibly beautiful tattoo. And you can see it's, it's in a relatively private place. Um, the, she, um, you know, this is not somewhere that um, is very public. Um, and, uh, and yet it's, you know, she, she knows it's there and, um, you know, in her own way, she's also even um, advocating, um, you know, for challenging stigma. Um, and, and in this one, is, there's also the connection um, between uh, the living uh, and the dead. Her, the top heart is um, the, her daughter, Avery, who died, and the other two hearts are her other two children. Um, and the purple butterfly bead uh, is the bravery bead that indicates that a child is near the end of life. So there, the beads have significance um, and uh, the tattoo artist did a fantastic job um, making that into a really, really beautiful, very, very personal tattoo. Uh, these tattoos uh, are um, on, on a a uh, couple um, whose uh, child was uh, born still. Um, the father has, uh, the one on the left is the father and he has the, um, the child's initials and the date of his birth and death. Um, and um, mother um, got hers a number of years later and um, at that point, uh, she had uh, two other children, so the the two uh, hearts outside of her, out of sort of the figure of the mother um, her, are the two other children, and um, and her heart um, and the uh, the baby who died um, heart. Uh, you know, they, they're all again. It's the connection with the with the living and the dead and the stylized. Um, um, the stylized, um, the um, stylized image of the of the baby. Um, it's the the um, it, she described it as a mother image with the forever baby, um, and um, why he's still on the inside. 
Um, this tattoo is also very uh, personal. Um, the, this um, it's the it's the tree of life um, because um, this person has always loved trees um, and um, it's honoring her son um, and um, the um, he died by suicide um, and um, she really felt that it was important to have um, something to be able to look at and to touch and to see, to remind herself that her son is with her all the time. Uh, the next tattoo um, is also very personalized. Um, and this, this particular person had two tattoos, one to honor his father, and this particular one honors his brother. Um, and his brother loved baseball. So this is a, a symbolic um, uh, baseball uh, crescent moon, um, which symbolizes a, a new beginning um, and, and is also a stylized baseball. Um, and these ones are, you know, both this, this man both had uh, both of his uh, tattoos on his forearms, but in uh, places that they could be hidden, um, but weren't necessarily hidden. Uh, and this tattoo uh, is also very, uh, very personal and personalized um, in that this is a father whose son also died by suicide. Um, and he, this is over his heart, and he knew he wanted to get a tattoo. He didn't know what to get, and this image came to him um, in a dream. Um, I, the tattoo artist, I think, uh, modified it slightly by adding a few more sort of wisps of smoke, um, but it symbolizes um, the the son as a little boy and the young, and the young man that he had become, but his future is is snuffed out. Um, and for for the father, uh, he he loved his son, but they he said we didn't have the, I didn't have the relationship that we wanted. So this is the physical embodiment of, of the father's feelings about his son. So where do they get them? Um, everybody put a great deal of thought um, into um, where they went um, on their body um, and um, about the more visible places and the less visible places that encouraged conversation. Um, these are very crude drawings of uh, placement of tattoos. Um, so you can see that there's more commonalities. There's more, you know, shoulders and and um, you know front and back shoulders and forearms. There's lots of places where there are no tattoos, um, and uh, so you know there's some commonalities. Um, but why? Why do people get tattoos? Um, some of some folks uh, talked about uh, talked about pain. Um, and linking the physical pain um, of the tattooing uh, to grief. Uh, this uh, is a granddaughter uh, who got her grandmother's um, signature um, tattooed on her. Um, she, said it, she, her, she said that allowed her every day to see it. Um, and that, that would bring a smile to her face instead of feeling the loss and pain of the loss of the loss of her grandmother. Um, and um, it, that particular story was lovely because she and her cousin both got the um, grandmother's uh, signature. The grandmother was ambidextrous, and so they each got it on either side, one one, one on the right shoulder, this one on the left shoulder. Um, and um, she also had designed her wedding dress so that this was visible, so that her grandmother was at her um, at her wedding with her. Um, this husband uh, is um, this is the this is the this gentleman actually got this tattoo before his wife died of cancer, um, and um, she was going through treatments, and he designed this. Um, 
and had it made into a necklace for her to wear and he got the tattoo. And her, her comment was um, that he wanted it to hurt more. It doesn't matter how much it hurt, it's nothing compared to what she was going through. So I welcomed, he welcomed the pain. Um, the, uh, this mother um, commented that it felt good to have physical pain instead of the constant emotional pain that, that she felt. Um, she said that getting a tattoo was a pain with meaning um, because the, the uh, pain that she felt from losing her son was useless. Um, it didn't help. It didn't bring him back. It didn't make her feel better. It did nothing. And that she was in agony. And she got this incredibly beautiful tattoo with a little tiny date in the corner and a background of a puzzle piece because there's something missing in her life. Um, it's a it's a it's a very personal tattoo and it's it's uh, uh, absolutely spectacular. Um, this is perhaps my favorite tattoo and all the ones I I shouldn't I shouldn't I shouldn't pick favorites, but uh, um, as you can see, this is a very large uh, piece. This is um, actually the husband of the. Um, the woman whose tattoo, the the woman whose tattoo you just saw, the, the these two are the couple of the son who died, um, and the son loved uh, rock climbing. So this is rock climbing implements designed into a tattoo. Again, a very personal tattoo um, with the son's um, dates um, on the uh, climbing equipment, but very very subtle. Um, you know, you could very easily miss those dates and not know that this was a memorial tattoo. Um, but this man commented that he had an extremely high pain threshold um, because this would, uh, you know, this is a very big piece and there, it, but there was a lot of, um, uh, there, was a, there was a lot of tattooing that went into this. Um, he commented that he loves the feel of it, the burn, just because it's like that and there's a, that, that there's a connection in that pain. Um, this uh, next tattoo um, is um, a first tattoo for, um, uh, for Riley. Um, this is a relatively small tattoo on a shoulder. Um, and this mother, <laughs> excuse me, commented that, that she was scared of the pain and she wasn't sure how she would do with a tattoo. So she got a very small one. Um, and with the infinity symbol, because love never dies, that incorporates her name. Um, and, and then she um, started um, thinking uh, about um, a different tattoo. And um, she um, went and got this next tattoo on her other shoulder um, which is uh, a cherry blossom because um, she said that they are vibrant and they only bloom for a very short time, but when they do, they're full of life and wonderful. And that was what her daughter was like. She wasn't here for very long, but when she was here, she was vibrant and beautiful and full of life. Um, and she also commented that the cherry blossom uh, was, when she saw the tattoo, it was much, much bigger than she expected it to be. And that at first she was a bit dismayed at the size um, and that she's come to love it. Uh, and this uh, next tattoo is also a fingerprint um, tattoo. Uh, this woman's mother died suddenly and um, unexpectedly and um, this woman thought she she had many many tattoos um, she thought she had finished getting tattoos and then her mother died and she knew she wanted one more and she got this she got her, her mother's um, fingerprint and the tattoo artist lifted the love mom out of a card that her mother had written and it's on the inside of her forearm facing in her direction it's 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 her, it's, it's her tattoo. It is, uh, um, you know, uh, oriented for her, and um, she was very thoughtful about that. 
Um, she commented, and again, she's, you know, she's got, she had many tattoos before this one. Um, she said the pain, the pain of being tattooed was kind of refreshing, that it was nice to feel a physical pain that's different from the ache that she felt. She felt like her heart, when her mother died, that her heart was being ripped out and stomped on. And so getting the tattoo was kind of cathartic. Um, this um, this t um, tattoo, uh, which is the last one that, uh, that I'm going to show you, um, is a wife whose husband died. Um, and her pain was... Um, was very emotional. She would get very angry, um, and um, she um, um, initially regretted uh, getting the tattoo because uh, seeing it reminded her of her husband, and um, her husband had died suddenly uh, of a death that could have been prevented, and um, she uh, was... Um, you know, really conflicted around that, and that, and then at first having the tattoo um, kind of reminded her of that, and you know, sort of caused the pain. Um, and uh, but she came to love the tattoo, um, and uh, she is of a Sikh background where tattoos are generally not well uh, regarded, um, but um, her parents uh, became very supportive of it, um, and. Uh, she also had young children, and she said, I want this to be a good thing. I want one of the children to look at it, to know that daddy is always with mommy a little bit. Um, so again, the, um, that, that connection uh, of the living and the dead. Um, so just the, what, I, what I think is really, really striking about all of the tattoos, uh, I was saying earlier that they don't necessarily look memorial, but they're a celebration of, they're a celebration of the person, they're a celebration of that person's life, they're a celebration of the relationship with the person, and they tell stories. Um, the images tell stories, there are stories that go along with them, um, and all of that uh, is about connection, and all of it embodies connection, and um, many people also embody the connection because um, they, uh, they touched their tattoos when they talked about them. They, there was a physicality about how they, um, you know, the, the, the choices that they made about where it was placed um, and, um, you know, what side of the body was on. There's a lot of left side uh, tattoos and like that are near the heart and the others that are, you know, near the, near the womb for some of the mothers and things like that. And they really do embody the connection. Um, and they all ink the bond. So that's, you know, that, that notion of continuing bond, they really do. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's really uh, inking it. Um, and so just in terms of what we are doing, we have, um, published one um, um, article in a, a journal called Death Studies, and I'd be happy to share a copy with anybody who would be interested in, in reading it, uh, Memorial, Memorial Tattoos, Advancing Continuing Bonds Theory. So again, it's that notion that, um, that uh, tattoos are, um, are a way of um, embodying the bonds, um, but also this, we touch on how um, how people are challenging challenging stigma, um, and uh, Carly Greco is one of the um, uh, authors on this paper. Um, she was a student who worked on the project and um, came up with part of the analysis. Um, and so she wasn't on the original team, but um, uh, participated in publishing the. Uh, article and we very very recently um, just got awarded a second uh, grant uh, for a larger project called Healing Tattoos. So we'll be sort of enlarging the umbrella um, and looking at um, tattoos uh, that are that are heal and not so not just memorialized but also heal. So um, you know the the umbrella will include memorial tattoos but won't be. Um, exclusive to, to memorial tattoos. Um, and so we have um, um, 
uh, website and um, uh, the uh, we have Instagram and Twitter. All of, I think I just there was the Instagram and Twitter inking the bond. We have a website um, and um, yeah, and I would be happy to take any questions that anybody might have. Uh, if anyone has questions, you can unmute yourself and talk. Hi, Susan. Um, I'll be the first one. I'm sure uh, someone needs to be the first one, right? <laughs> um, but maybe I missed this at the beginning. I joined a. Um, I was I joined in and out for a moment there, but um, how did you like become interested in like what started all of this for you? I didn't actually talk about that. So um, years ago, I was um, co-facilitating a grief group in the community with bereaved families of Ontario, and started noticing people with tattoos with who would say things like, oh, "I never thought I was going to get a tattoo." Uh, but it just seemed the right thing to do. And just like, I, I and th things like that. And I just, I kept, I was kind of intrigued. And then um, talk, I, you know, talked to, uh, talked to a few folks and then talked to Melissa and um, yeah. And then we just, then we just started doing it. And we thought, we thought, oh, you know, we'll just, we'll interview a few people. We'll see, you know, we'll just kind of start small and see what happens. We thought maybe we'd interview 10 or 15 people and we put the ask out and we had 60 people volunteer, six zero people volunteer, like people wanted to tell their stories. So we were like, okay, we're onto something. <laughs> yeah, it was really great. So we tried to, and we had people like, we thought we'd just do it locally. We had people like all over the country volunteering. So we didn't do, um, the, all the interviewing that we wanted to, but yeah, we had a really great response. Awesome. Thanks for sharing the work. It's really fascinating. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, so I'm gonna take that as a no, but if you have any questions, please make sure to put it in the chat before we end. Um, and well, just, uh, I want to, um, I did the, um, uh, uh, we have our Inking the Bond uh, Instagram, but I want to do a little shout out. If the, those of you on Instagram haven't uh, seen, there's a Instagram account called Tattoos of Toronto. Uh, which is uh, the passion project of uh, Ziba, who's one of the people on the on the call, and uh, it's it's awesome. And it's basically, you know, they're not all memorial tattoos, but they're tattoos and their stories. And it's it's a really great uh, it's a really great account. It's really wonderful to hear people's stories. All right. Um... Okay, so then we have one question. Yeah. Um, so it says, great presentation. I was interested in the gentleman who was asked to be interviewed twice. Do you think that yeah. participating in this project was in and of itself help, helpful for the grief? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, uh, that is a very good question. I'm, I haven't thought about it. I mean, I think it, it, it's, um, uh, it's, I think uh, people telling their stories is always beneficial. So yes, um, you know, was it necessarily, uh, you know, beneficial uh, for his grief? And what was interesting too, is that, um, you know, his, his, uh, his tattoos were, uh, were really different and he had actually talked to us in the first one um, and, uh, you know, about the planning the second one. And so then came back and told us about the second one. So it was really, that was neat for us uh, in terms of, you know, sort of hearing about the planning and then hearing about how, um, you know, it changed. Cause you know, the tattoo artists have a bit of a role in, you know, 
what what things end up looking like and what's going to work and what's not going to work. So um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if it was helpful for his grief, but uh, he he certainly um, certainly enjoyed it. So that can't be bad. <laughs> Uh, does anyone else have any questions? And Ziva's put up the tattoos of Toronto on the on Instagram in the message if anybody wants to have a look at that. So um, I would like to thank you, Susan, for the fascinating talk tonight. I certainly learned a lot uh, about memorial tattoos and who gets it and why and how it all connects to grief. Thank you so much for sharing all like, so many beautiful pictures and stories. I was very, very touched, as I'm sure um, it's a lot of the audiences. Um, I, wanted, I want to let you know that we all appreciate the work you do, and I thank you again for sharing some of that work tonight. Um, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Uh, if you have mm -hmm. any comments or questions, please feel free to leave it before you leave, and have a very good evening. Thank you for being here, everyone.